Welcome to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, we are going to be finishing up and mounting this DIY Porsche rotisserie. Now, if you guys caught the last episode, you saw that I used my dustless blasting setup to strip the engine compartment, interior, and frunk of the car. I've done a ton of work since then, all super tedious stuff. Um, I've acid etched most of the metal. So anywhere there was like a corner where it would stay wet, where there was a little sand trapped, it uh, get a little flash rusting. So I acid etched all that stuff. I wiped the entire thing down with a baking soda based water. That's all the kind of white streaks you see here. It's fine the way it is right now. So I'm just gonna leave it. However, I was not able to get really like up in the upper tier of the roof or underneath the car, thus necessitating the need for a rotisserie. So I got this rotisserie from a guy on Instagram called Efren Porsche, who you should follow right now because he gets the coolest vintage Porsche stuff. He goes out and buys like, you know, he gets them from all over the place, you know, yard sales and eBay or whatever, but then he resells them. But he gets some of the coolest stuff reached out and said, dude, do you need a rotisserie? I know you're blasting your car. So this one was made by a company that was doing like a lot of 912 and 911 restoration. It's this basic octagonal rotisserie that we're gonna modify by putting some wheels from our favorite Chinese tool manufacturer uh, on. And I gotta make some plates for it and then get the wheels bolted on. And then once that's done, hopefully get this thing mounted and, and see what it looks like kind of flipped up on its roof or whatever. But the kicker is I'm gonna to have to figure out how to finagle the quick jack because this thing mounts to the suspension mounting points and I've stripped all the suspension off so I needed to do that anyway, which is great. But the quick jack gets in the way of the rear suspension mounting point. So I'm gonna to have to figure that out between now and when I mount it. The front one I think is gonna mount up just fine. Uh, but for now, Let's see if we can get these plates welded on and get these wheels on before we mount these suckers up. Now that I've got this car disassembled, I've got stuff everywhere and I totally need to do a garage cleanup. Anyway, I need four of these plates and I'm gonna just mark them. This is gonna be a little quick and dirty. I'm not super concerned about a lot of it. You know, it should be relatively straightforward. So all we're gonna do here is cut these plates out, drill the holes and then weld them on to the, uh, the rotisserie, and then that should be good to go. Wish I had a drill press. 16 holes drilled. That whole process took me like an hour, hour and a half to cut these four pieces and drill the 16 holes. pigeon poop to look at. Well, believe it or not, that process took the better part of three hours to get those things cut and welded and on. Now it's time to mount the wheels. Thankfully, I think I have enough hardware for it. So once they are on, we can figure out how to get this thing mounted on the car. So I made a hilarious mistake in that I welded the platforms 90 degrees off. However, all is not lost. All I have to do is return my rigid fixed casters back to Harbor Freight and then get two more of these movie aroundy casters and then all will be well. The swivel casters are 
the key here. All right, so I went in and got some dinner and realized that I don't actually have to stop working on this thing. I've got some energy. It's still pretty early in the evening and I really wanted to get this thing set up tonight. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try to throw the front one on first and then figure out how I'm gonna do the back one. Again, my quick jack is in the way, but that is nothing insurmountable. I'll figure out how to work around that and see if we can get this thing bolted together. Now, if you wanna build one of these yourself, it's not that hard. I mean, this is just one inch square tubing. I'd probably use two if I was gonna do it from scratch, uh, two inch tubing. And you just have to cut the angles at 135 degrees, which will form an octagon. The wide bar is uh, 40, let's call it 41. So we got 41 inches for the long side, 25 inches for the short side. Every angle is 135 degrees. And that's it. You got yourself a, uh, you know, at least that's the octagon. And then you have to make a plate that bolts in wherever you want. Um, I would probably do it to the suspension mounting points versus this crossbar area. But again, the chassis is pretty light. Your mileage may vary. Now I'm using these M8 Allen bolts, which were gifted to me on my Amazon wish list by one of you fine folks, whoever I've thanked already privately, I just don't have his name handy right now, but that Amazon wish list is absolutely things that I need and use on this car. So if you guys wanna support the channel and support the fun that we're doing over here, uh, wrench.com slash high five is my links to how you can support the show, uh, including Amazon wish list. And a lot of this hardware and stuff is so critical to what I'm doing right now. So it's super cool and I wanna thank all of you guys for contributing. I don't really know how to get the thing up there myself. I might use the jack. I had the wheel out there before and that was pretty helpful. It's kind of a two person job. That's not gonna work. Well, that's kinda of close. The thing about this is the uh, the bolts, fuck. The bolts are very close. They're right tight. Let's try the tire approach again. I'm gonna put a tire under the car and try to rest the bottom on top of it. Doesn't get me all the way there, but it gets me closer. to run a, uh, a drill through these holes because I've just got no wiggle room inside the bolt hole here. Okay, it's kind of hanging on there. I just need one. You give me one and I got everything. That's the one I need right there. All right. Yep, I got her, I got her, nice and easy, and one's already mounted, there you go, yep, get in there Lewis, what you guys think of the Formula One championship, I was a max guy so I didn't, I wasn't very really heartbroken that Lewis lost but I definitely see the, uh, oh, maybe I can't use this. I can't use that for this one. Definitely can see how it was controversial. I will say these things are lining up like perfectly. So that's impressive. All right, front is mounted loosely. I'm gonna now attempt to mount the back. So I've got to reconnect my quick jack controller 
get the fender out of the way. And what I think I'm gonna do is stack my wooden jack thingamabobs. Maybe I can actually just uh, put my jack jack under there. I just need to get the quick jacks out so I can finagle the, the octagon in. All right, I'm gonna give this thing a go now. This is a logistical challenge. Okay, we are mounted. It took a lot of finagling. So now I have these crossbars to install and they go uh, bottom and top. We are completely connected. Now it's time to tighten all of this stuff down and uh, see where we're at. Now to figure out how to get this stuff out from underneath, we're gonna be in business. Uh, okay, so I need to figure out how to get these things out from underneath. That would be the current challenge. Okay, that's it. That is it, here we are. All right, here's the massively nerve-wracking part of this operation, which is the roll. This is pretty bitching now, right out of the gates. Gotta take a picture of this. All right, I'm gonna slide these mats under here. So it'll make it easier to uh, move it around. Assuming I can actually get the thing down on this quarter. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> That's crazy cool. Yeah, let's look at that from the outside. That's dope. So it's really easy to see instantly why I did this. First of all, it's almost like looking at a completely different car. What do you think, Ben? Isn't it weird to look underneath? I can get to all of this stuff now, get all the sand and stuff off and start the process of 
Getting the floor dialed in, I mean, I really need to get all this white paint off of it and then put a nice coat of undercoating on it. Um, I can work on this section here, which is a pain in the butt. This is where my, my uh, lines go through for my radiator. Um, obviously, get all the paint and stuff off. We can look here and see the um, underneath on the inside. You know, like I can see all the stuff to clean off here, but also just seeing spots where I need to weld, like when you see that little light coming through there, I gotta weld that up. Like that's a, that's a hole. Uh, it's just so much better. I mean, this is just so good. Tomorrow I'm gonna do a few things, break my welder out and get a few spots that were really, really difficult to reach. I'm um, obviously gonna get these wheels and get them dialed in on this side and start making a plan for how I'm gonna attack this this edge. If I can get the white paint off relatively easily, I may just do it with a, a, a grinder or some kind of wire brush and then start the process of, you know, undercoating and then just be done with the underneath of the car. But really, really psyched. What a cool project. How cool. So I think you could build this rotisserie for like a couple hundred bucks tops. This one inch tubing, I think you'd need, Let's see, how many we got here? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I bet you could do it for eight to 10, 10 foot, one inch square tubes. And then it's just a matter of welding them up and you know, putting them together. But not crazy, like it's a pretty simple rotisserie. And I'm really glad I have it because this is gonna really help me in my blasting world as well. Um, anyway, how fun. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you, as always, so much for watching what we're doing here in this little wrench garage. And uh, stay tuned for Primer. It's coming. It's coming soon.